Hello from the big island of Hawaii. Hawaii is one of the most notoriously expensive places to travel on the planet. And in preparation of our trip here, we watched a couple videos that covered how to cut costs while you're traveling in Hawaii, but oftentimes they didn't cover basic costs like food or transportation. So in today's video, we're going to show you how to travel to Hawaii on a budget of $150 per day per person, including gas, food, entertainment, lodging, everything. Starting with breakfast. So we got bagels and banana from Target yesterday, costing us a grand total of a dollar per day. Our Airbnb had peanut butter, so we can make a tasty peanut butter banana bagel sandwich if you've never had it before. Highly recommend. Uh, and our Airbnb also had coffee, so we are caffeinated and actually I think we're arriving at our first stop. This morning we're headed to the Kialakakua Bay, the Captain Cook Monument. It's about a two mile hike to the beach from the main road. Once we get there, we've got some snorkeling planned. Kealakakua Bay is supposed to have some of the best snorkeling in all of the chain of islands of Hawaii. So I'm really excited. There's supposed to be turtles, maybe even dolphins. So we'll see. Just a heads up, if you are a beginner hiker or someone who struggles with mobility issues, the hike to the beach is downhill almost the entire way, uh, which may be deceptively easy, but I would build in some extra time and definitely bring a bottle of water for the hike back up uh, because you'll definitely be burning a few more calories. It's worth noting that there's actually two different ways to reach this bay. You can either hike in, two miles in, two miles out the way that we're doing, or alternatively, you can take a boat in. There's little zodiacs and other kinds of snorkeling tours you can take. Obviously, we're on a budget today, so we're sticking with the hiking free route, but if you're not on a budget or you have mobility issues, you can definitely check out a boat in as you can see, we have made it to the Captain Cook Monument right behind me. Captain Cook was a British explorer in the 1700s. Captain Cook and his crew landed here in January of 1779 to fix one of the masts on their ship. At first, things were peaceful between the crew and the native Hawaiians, but they honestly overstayed their welcome. And in February 1779, a fight broke out. Captain Cook decided after that fight to come back on the island and try to overtake the King of Hawaii by force. The native Hawaiians pushed Captain Cook and his crew to shore and wound up stabbing and bludgeoning Captain Cook to death a couple hundred yards from here. Also interesting fact, the land that I'm standing on right now is owned by the British, whereas the land on the other side of this chain is owned by the United States of America. Am I so grateful? Okay, we just got done snorkeling at the Captain Hook Monument, and wow, that <laughs> was, what, what is it? Captain Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Hook. <laughs> Correction. So we just got done snorkeling at the Captain Cook Monument, and wow, it was so incredible. Some of the clearest water, brightest colored coral I've ever seen in my life. What I really loved about it is that because you can only hike or take a boat in, the coral looks completely untouched by humans. Uh, just kind of general tip, leave no trace sort of principle, please don't touch or stand on the coral. It can take up to 10 years for a single thing of coral to grow back. Besides the beautiful coral, we probably saw dozens of different species of fish. I saw a sea turtle. Unfortunately, I didn't have the GoPro, so I didn't get footage of it. And we both heard a dolphin. We didn't see it. <laughs> we but, think. Yeah, yeah, we think. But it had a very distinctive... Uh, <laughs> like a... <laughs> yeah, like that. We're a little bummed out that we have to go. Honestly, we kind of wish we had just brought lunch 
and stayed here all day. This is some of the best snorkeling we've ever experienced. But a lot more to do, a lot more to see, tons of fun to be had in Hawaii. Bye Captain Cook's Monument. So remember when I said that it would feel steeper going up? Well, that was some sage wisdom. Please excuse my sweaty face. It is muggy. You might say I'm cooking in this heat. <laughs> Captain Cook, get it? We brought our food back to the Airbnb we wound up going to a restaurant called Loco Wraps. The kind of concept is a fusion of Mexican food with Hawaiian. Per their website, they call it a pinata with a luau inside, which I think is kind of fun. So Justin is numbing down on a burrito with some veggies inside of it. And then I have a bento box with spicy jackfruit. Um, and then there's some coconut rice, pineapple coleslaw, and then a salad on top of it. So it looks really good and it wound up costing only $11 per person. Our Airbnb is $99 a night, so $50 per person. We're staying in Kona right now, which is on the western side of the island. Hilo on the eastern side of the island, which is closer to Volcanoes National Park, is considerably cheaper. I think our Airbnb over there is like $45 a night. So if you're on a really tight budget, I'd suggest checking out over there. We have our own private bedroom, which I'm standing in right now. We are sharing a bathroom with about five or six other people. It's kind of probably the biggest downside, but it really hasn't been that big of an issue. Upstairs, there's a kitchen with coffee, tea, and other goodies for the guests to share. There's also a really beautiful balcony that you can eat any kind of things that you cook or takeaway foods on. Outside, the Airbnb host has boogie boards, snorkels, umbrellas, really anything that you need to have an awesome beach day. There are a few cheaper options on the island, like hostels, which we'll link to down below if you're interested, but otherwise Airbnb is gonna be one of your best shots to having a really cheap and awesome accommodations on the island. We showered, we rested, and now we're about to get coffee. We're in Kona, so obviously we had to visit a Kona coffee farm. Kona coffee is some of the best in the world for a variety of reasons, from the volcanic soil here to the overcast skies. We visited the Heavenly Hawaii coffee farm for only $8. They will take you around their property as well as tell you the process of how they make their coffee. Included in that price, you will also get four different types of coffee as well as a cold brew sample and three different types of candy. It's my kind of tour. Heavenly Hawaii Coffee Company was good to us, but now we're off to our next destination to try a different kind of drink. Cocktails! We made it to Huggos on the Rocks. Generally, this place is pretty pricey uh, because it is right on the beach. However, we were able to get here during happy hour and these super tasty margaritas were only $5 a piece. It's like real good, y'all. Cheers. So I realized that I have not yet talked about our rental car situation. We rented a car for $99 a day or $50 per person. We are staying on the big island right now. We've been to three out of the four major Hawaiian islands. And I'd say the only one that you can really get away with without having a car is maybe Oahu where you could possibly get around with public transit. Here we could not get an Uber or Lyft to save our lives at 9 p.m. from the airport. So I'd really highly recommend if you want to explore, if you're not planning on just staying at your resort, to get a rental car. The way that I recommend booking is checking all of the third-party sites. The ones that I use are Expedia, Hotwire, Priceline, Orbitz, pretty much all of them. I compare rates and see which one is more affordable. The one recommendation I would have though is to make sure that you book something cancelable. So to the extent you find something that's cheaper, you can book it and no harm, no fault. We are on our way to dinner. One thing that I wanted to point out is that Today we have run into all kinds of issues from places having menu changes where things are maybe twice as expensive as they were previously, to places being closed, to happy hour menus that have changed. So have a plan B, have a plan C, and be okay and adaptable when things change. We stopped at Herb Wars and are splitting a Hawaiian pizza for $13. 
per person. We decided to take our pizza to the beach to watch sunset right behind me. Justin's got the pizza. We wanted to close out this video by talking a little bit about how much everything costs. So all up included, gas, food, entertainment. We spent about $148 today. So regardless of how much you want to spend, it's totally doable. Uh, we're going to do another video where we're hiking Mauna Kea, which is the tallest mountain in the world. So if you want to see that, we'll put the link below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and mahalo. Aloha.